Oh, hello. Like, oh. You come with props. It's the USS Johan. I do. Hey, man. <laughs> the yes, USS Johan. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't see you there. I was Oh, you were playing with your USS toys. Enterprise. You yes, were in the I'm toy sorry. box. <laughs> yes, I was hoping you could give me a few pointers. You know, you have expertise in these matters. Yes. This is your captain. Our mission. To chart the stars. Star Trek-franchisen lever i bedste velgående. Den seneste håndfuld år har vi fået hele fem nye Star Trek-serier, og den seneste af slagsen er Strange New Worlds, som har hjemme lige har kickstartet sin anden sæson på streamingtjenesten Sky Showtime. I sense a tension, a feeling that something's in the air. Oh my god. Our job puts us up against death. We not like it, but we do have to face it. Hold on to your saddles. Men pushy nok så kunne Strange New Worlds også have været den første Star Trek serie, for den handler om rumskibet Enterprises eventyr i det 23. århundrede, hvor Starfleet kaptajnen Christopher Pike og hans mandskab udforsker galaksen. Og det var faktisk oplægget i den allerførste Star Trek pilot fra 1964, The Cage, som ikke fik grønt lys. Check the circuit. All operating, sir. Men små to år senere fik vi så den oprindelige Star Trek serie med William Shatner i rollen som Pikes afløser, Captain Kirk, og hvor en nu lidt ældre Spock stadig var med ombord på Enterprise. Og nøjagtigt ligesom den oprindelige Star Trek-serie, så er Strange New Worlds en enormt underholdende science fiction saga, som stilsikkert veksler mellem en masse forskellige genre, og som buner af flotte effekter og kulisser, men mest af alt gode historier og glimrende skuespil. This court is now in session. How do you plead, Commander? Not guilty. Og vi har talt med to af serien stjerner, Anson Mount og Rebecca Romain. Mount spiller Captain Pike, og Mount er derudover nok bedst kendt for rollen som Marvel-helten Black Bolt i serien The Inhumans og den seneste Doctor Strange-film. Og så må vi naturligvis ikke glemme, at Mount også spillede Britney Spears udkårende i Crossroads. Og Rebecca Romain har også Marvel-erfaring på CV'et. I de første X-Men-film spillede hun nemlig den blåfarvede mutant Mystique. Og i Star Trek Strange New World spiller Romain Pikes højre hånd, Commander Una Chin Riley. We should make them walk the plane, Gary. Please stop. Og netop derfor er det pudsigt, at Romain er gift med skuespilleren Jerry O'Connell, for han spiller faktisk også kaptajnens højre hånd i en Star Trek-serie. Nemlig Commander Jack Ransom i animationsserien Star Trek Lower Decks. Then behold! Og apropos Lower Decks, så byder den sprit nye sæson af Strange New Worlds på et såkaldt crossover-afsnit, hvor Lower Decks animerede helte møder Pike og Una. Live long and prosper, Mr. Boimler. I also, you can also live in. Både Mount og Romain spillede deres Starfleet-helte for første gang i 2019, hvor de dukkede op i anden sæson af Star Trek Discovery. Og her gjorde de to skuespillere et så stort indtryk på Trekkies, at det udløste et opråb om at give dem deres egen serie. Og den har vi altså fået nu. The next great age of exploration starts with us. If one of them, one of the object- objectives with the first season was to prove that you could fashion your own independent and strong uh, spin-off out of the sort of the building blocks of Discovery and the original shows, and you definitely proved that. What were some of your main objectives with taking it on to the second season? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah the, not not resting on our laurels. Not repeating the same thing yeah. twice. Expansion, yeah. going bigger and better than before. Um, we were given f- more freedom from the executives to really go for it in season two. Yeah. And some of the risks that we took in season one, really, that the executives weren't sure about, really popped. And so 
feels like we've been entrusted to just really go for it in season two, genre-wise. And so we have, and we're so excited about some of the things coming up in season two. Yeah. And I think genre-wise, one of the reasons I love Strange New Worlds is how it dabbles with humor, much more so than I guess most of the other shows have done. And I've always felt that the franchise is sort of underrated for how well it does humor. Family, you understand. Not really. I was cloned. And like charades, the, one of the episodes in the second season is now one of my all-time favorite comedy episodes. It's so oh. funny. What's happened to me? You were in a shuttle accident. Seems to have made you human. What the? F it's so well written and acted. Yeah. But I'd love to hear you guys. Do you have a preference in terms of? Do you more enjoy sort of the more thought-provoking, serious stuff as actors, or is it the comedy, or is it the the combination of both that excites you? I think as actors, we love all of it. And Anson and I loved somewhere within the early on in the first season, we had to remind ourselves how funny the original series was, and how much fun Shatner and Nimoy were having together, and how much they must have been laughing on that set. And we've really had fun seeking out comedy beats, sometimes where there aren't even any, you know? I love this job. To play all of it, horror, comedy, the stakes, um, it's really, it's all encompassing. We love all of it. Yeah, especially with action adventure, you, you gotta know when to take your foot off the gas pedal every now and then, or it just becomes too deliberate all the time, and it, and it, it stops having its effect. Yeah. But it's kind of sad that Star Trek is sort of more relevant than it ever has been. It feels like this world is, is you know, becoming more divisive and destructive as, as we move along. And I felt we're in a time where arguably there hasn't been that as many great television shows at one time as there are now. But so many of them are so serious and steeped in corruption and backstabbing, infidelity, anger, all this sort of stuff. You're one of the few shows that promotes, you know, hope and honor and togetherness. Is does you, Do you take a special pride in the show because of that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All the all the shows set in the future seem to be these dystopian landscapes that uh, I don't know. Uh, I think that that Star Trek is a, a breath of fresh air from that. Go to war with each other, or join our Federation of Planets and reach for the stars. The choice is yours. Offers a glimpse of hopefulness. I mean, it's, you know, it can be so scary looking at the, some of the futuristic sci-fi episodes where they're always out to kill the, the monster of the week. And we're here to embrace the monster of the week or the alien of the week as it, as it may. Yeah, it's a huge sci-fi geek. I don't think I can actually mention a single sci-fi saga that that's not dystopian aside from you know star trek it's it's incredible that's why we love it of course and one of the things that we are so excited about with this season we've only seen the first six episodes so i'm kind of bummed out i haven't seen the lower decks crossover yet but i guess the funny thing is that that rebecca you've obviously lived in a lower decks crossover at home for a long time <laughs> and i was wondering do you and jerry ever do like you know bracking battles in terms of star trek like he'll be guess what you know today i visited deep space nine i battled a giant green alien and you'll be like you know, yeah that's cool and all but you know i'm second in command of the uss enterprise i saved it from a deadly contagion you know? jerry yeah, and i have a healthy sense of competition behind closed doors with everything i mean we bet on everything so yes do we discuss who is the better number one in our household of course we do it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. No doubt. And so I would also love to ask you, because, of course, you've, you've spoken before about the emotional experience about sitting in that captain's chair for the very first time. But I'd also love to hear if you remember stepping into that recording booth for the first time and uttering the Space, the Final Frontier speech. Space. The Final Frontier. Because, of course, there's this, there's this famous story yeah. about William Shatner having to be forced into a golf cart and rushed to the sound studio, you know, a few days before the first episode aired. Space. The final frontier. But I'd love to hear your story walking into that recording booth in the footsteps of Shatner and Stewart. To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no one has gone before. Well, it's actually a good story because it wasn't a recording booth. Um, it, we were we were still under lockdown. So what they did is they sent they sent me this uh, box of recording equipment that I could use at home. Uh, and so I was in my basement. The technical team operating this box was in New York, and the post production team was in Los Angeles. 
And we were really spending a lot of time on that monologue, uh, trying to get it exactly right. Cause you know, it's, you got Important. one shot at it, <laughs> right? It's, yeah. and, and then, um, so we were working on it, working on it, working on it and piecing this sentence to that sentence. And there were these little pauses that were happening as they were building it. And then, uh, and I said, guys, can we just take a moment to realize here that, that this is, we're going to remember this moment for the rest of our professional lives that, that we got to record this monologue and everybody was like, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. It's really cool. And then I, I realized, and I said, of course, <laughs> you all realize that William Shatner is in orbit right now. <laughs> and he was, this was while he was in orbit with Jeff Bezos, we were recording that wow. monologue. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't make that up. And it, it was, it was also a great realization because it took the pressure off of, you know, it just told me, don't try to outdo Shatner. Right. You, you just, you just got outdone by Shatner <laughs> yet again. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. But looking forward to, of course, the next crossover, I'm assuming that, you know, of course, Anson, you're, you're lobbying for Black Bolt versus Captain Pike. I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be a, that, yeah, that would be a difficult uh, contract to negotiate, I think. 